This is me soloing the first room in this week's Nightfall on Master difficulty, so I'll let the gameplay speak for itself, then get into the build. What it do YouTube, it's Kindu, and in today's video I want to tell you about the best ARC 3.0 build for Titans. Now I feel like this build is going to be a good contender for GMs when they come this season, I just wish there was a way for me to actually show gameplay of that, but we gotta wait until they actually come out. And just like my ARC Hunter build that I posted, you can use this build with and without the Lightning Strikes Twice seasonal mod. And with that being said, be sure to like and subscribe, and more videos to come. So now getting into it, the exotic armor we're going to be using is the Heart of Inmost Light, which the perk is called Overflowing Light, which reads, Using an ability, grenade, melee, or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. So this exotic alone, along with mods that are going to be creating a lot of arc wells for us, is going to be the reason we're able to spam so much nades and abilities like this. The class ability you want to use is thruster because it has the shortest cooldown and won't interrupt the flow of your gameplay. The melee you want to go with is between seismic strike and thunderclap and the nade for this build is definitely going to be storm nades. Now getting into the aspects, the first aspect is going to be touch of thunder which is your flashbang, pulse, lightning, and storm grenades have enhanced functionality. I'm only going to read storm grenades since that's the only nade we're going to be using in this build. Storm Grenade. After detonating, creates a roaming thundercloud and tracks nearby targets and fires bolts of lightning at foes beneath it. We're basically going to be spamming a grenade that just roams around whatever activity that you're doing, and with the fragment that we're going to pair with it, it's going to last even longer. The second aspect we're going to be using is Knockout, and it is critically wounding a target or breaking their shield infuses your melee attacks with arc energy and increases your melee range and damage for a short time. Defeating targets with melee attacks starts health regeneration and makes you amplified. With how many arc wells we're gonna be making along with the Heart of Inmost Light, we're always gonna have our melee charge, which means we're always gonna be able to become amplified. Now moving on to the fragments, we have Spark of Shock, which is your arc grenades, jolt targets, and Spark of Ions, which is defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace. Spark of Shock is a way to give your grenades more AoE, and then Spark of Ions is going to be another way to get all your abilities back faster. The second two fragments are Spark of Recharge, which is while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerates more quickly, and Spark of Magnitude, which is your lingering arc grenades, lightning grenade, pulse grenade, and storm grenade have an extended duration. Now with Spark of Recharge, this build is so aggressive that there are going to be times where you're going to be weaker, so it's just a safe bet to have something that's going to get your abilities even back faster. And for Spark of Magnitude, since this build is focused around how much a Storm Nade can do, we want it to last even longer. Moving on to the mods, on the head armor, you're going to run two Ashes to Assets, which is going to allow us to get our super ability back way faster, and then at the last column, we're going to run Bountiful Wells. For the arm mods, we're going to run two bolts during detonations which grants class ability energy when you cause damage with the grenade and then we're going to have elemental ordnance so then we could create wells when we get a kill with our grenade. For the chest mods we're going to have two thermal shock platings on because it's always good to have extra damage resistance and then for the last slot we're going to have seeking wells so then all the wells we create can track to our location. For the leg mods, we're going to run two innervations just in case there's ever orbs of power for us to pick up to reduce our grenade cooldown. And then in the last column, we're going to have elemental ordnance again. 
Finally, for the class item mods, we're going to be running distribution, which is going to be an alternative for lightning strikes twice by the end of the season. And then in the last column, we're going to run another elemental ordinance because when you stack these with bountiful wells, it's going to make even more wells. For focusing on stats, I would say go with 100 resilience. Try to get your discipline as high as it can and try to get your recovery as high as it can. Something I also want to add is you can run a weapon that has demolitionist, but it's not required. That about wraps up the build. Hope you enjoy to have a crazy hunter build coming soon so stay tuned for that be sure to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video peace bitch it's an estimate like it's a guess this gonna pop and talking no tart hitting the point like using the dart just like a tesla don't push me to start dishing this out just like using the card